Good morning. I guess uh, because of the situation that we are experiencing now, we have to go to this kind of media in order to deliver the Lord's message. But all the same, we believe that we will be able to give you the message that the Lord wants us to deliver. By now, I presume that you have already read the passage that we have, which is in John chapter 9 verse 1 to 7 and we can see from this passage that this is one of those unusual miracles that Jesus had performed so as we go to verse 1 in chapter 9 it says as he went along he saw a man blind from birth and immediately, what comes to mind for everyone would be, why? What's the reason? And when asking the reason, two things come to mind also. Reason, meaning what is the cause, or reason, meaning what is the purpose. And so we can see from here that the two uh, questions that came or the question and the answer first the question coming from the disciples when they said Rabbi who sinned the man or his parents that he was born blind and when we listen to that question immediately what comes to mind is that the disciples were probably thinking what was the cause why was he born blind why did he have to suffer in other words, where their thinking is the reason why he was born blind. But Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. Again, reason. But this time, it is the purpose. So reason can mean two things. The cause or the purpose. It depends upon the person how he looks at things. We can see from this point the disciples were quite familiar probably with the teachings of the Old Testament. So allow me to uh, go with you for a while. Let's go to Exodus and uh, we can see from Exodus chapter 34, verse 7. Exodus chapter 34, verse 7 says, Maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin, yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generations. So brothers and sisters, this teaching has been with us ever since we were kids, probably. Normally, when the kid grows up, they will always say, Okay, since you misbehaved, then you will be punished. And because you have achieved much, probably in his schooling, he was able to have good grades, then you will be rewarded. So that has always been part of us. The, the punishment and the reward, when you do bad things, you get punished. When you do something good or achieve something great, then you will be rewarded. So punishment and reward. And the way I see it, that has, this is also the thing that was in the mind of the disciples because according to Moses, here, God is the kind of God also that rewards and also punishes. So immediately upon seeing the man, he said, okay, 
this man is born blind, definitely he did something wrong. And if he did something wrong, then uh, that's the reason, the cause. The reason, the cause. But Jesus was thinking about the purpose. And we see the same situation that we go through today. You see, when the COVID-19 problem broke out way, way back, I think that's about December. And uh, when we received the news that there was this mysterious virus that's, that came out in Wuhan. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the people were even saying that it's probably because these people, uh, us, because we're Chinese, um, were eating this exotic food, eating bats, eating rats, and whatnot. And so they said, well, this is because they have done something wrong, sin. And that's always in the mind of people. But later on, it, it was found out that it was not so. It was person-to-person -person transmission. It was not only about eating all those exotic food. So then, people were still at the point of condemning. They said, oh, because they have seen, they are not Christians, and, and a lot of them are worshipping you know, idols and stuff like that, or not probably even worshipping anything. They're not worshipping anything. They're atheists. So we condemn. And so we were thinking the cause. We were thinking why this thing happened to them. The cause. What wrong things they've done that allowed these things to happen in their lives. But only a few people probably were thinking about the purpose. Why these things happened to them. And some of the purpose became evident when we were able to see the true meaning of love, when those health workers, despite the danger to their own lives, never gave up. They kept on working. They were there. And they were spending long hours. Some of them even have to suffer death because they were exposed to the virus. There we can see how hospital can be built in 10 days. Great achievement. And uh, as of this recording, about, about two days ago, we heard the news that there is now zero case uh, of uh, coronavirus in Wuhan. I mean, new case. There was no longer a new case. In other words, they were able to successfully control the spread of the virus in Wuhan itself, the epicenter. And uh, although there are still um, new cases all over China, and most of it coming from foreigners that are coming in, but on Wuhan itself, the place where it all started, it was already zero new cases. So see how the humankind, the humanity can work together to help each other out. But probably what we did not know were the people behind praying. And I was doing a little bit of research and I found out from a research done recently about the worshipping community in Wuhan. And I found out there are hundreds of Christian churches there. A combination of Christian churches, Tree Self Church, and even the house churches. And so many of them. Maybe it's not publicized. But I'm sure after the smoke clears, after this thing is behind us, there will be many who will come out with great testimonies, telling people about how they triumphed over this adversity, how they were able to go beyond this and to triumph 
and to be victorious against a virus which the Chinese are already calling a demonic virus. I would like to tell the story also of uh, Stevie Wonder. I know many of you know Stevie is a great musician and a blind musician. And Stevie was born back in the 1950s, a premature child. He was seven and a half, because like they said, he was six weeks short. So if it's nine months, maybe uh, seven and a half weeks, I mean seven and a half months. And because of that, uh, the blood vessels in his eyes were not fully developed. And so what happened was he was born blind. He wouldn't see. But he didn't allow that to stop him. He didn't allow that to stop him. And at a very early age, he was already been of being a happy child. And I would just like to read a, a quote here. Uh, one time he had an interview with Oprah Winfrey, and uh, he was asked, and he said, uh, is it true that as a child of five years, like five years old, that you told your mom not to cry or do not be sad? And uh, he said, yeah, that's true. And he told his mother, don't worry about me being blind because I'm happy. Don't worry about me being blind because I'm happy. And he was farther asked, like, why did you say that? And he said, well, because I was so concerned because my mother was crying all the time. It was my mother that was constantly crying because he felt like he was being pun she was being punished by God for probably a sin that she has committed some time, long time ago. And so she was always sad. And so I told her, don't worry about me being blind because I'm happy. And sometimes it's quite ironic that the people who are blind are the ones that are happier than those that are that, that can see. And in this case with Stevie Wonder, he proved to the world that blindness cannot stop him. He proceeded to achieve so much, to excel in the field of music. And one of the quotes that he said was that, I am what I am. I love me. And I don't mean that egotistically. I love that God has allowed me to take whatever it was that I had and to make something out of it. So brothers and sisters, sometimes it is because of a disability that causes us to glorify God. And as we continue with our story, Jesus told the disciples, this has happened to that so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And it is important, brothers and sisters, we have to understand that each one of us is created for a purpose. God has ordained us to be here at this time. Yes! Some people would even say, I wish I was not born at this time. With the coronavirus going wild, who would have wished? But we are here, and this is now. And we have to make a difference because we were chosen to be here at this time. Each one has his own purpose. Are we still trying to think about the cause? Or are we slowly understanding the purpose of God? Perhaps some of you might be in, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, community quarantine. And you have to stay home. Maybe it's time to bond with your loved ones. Think about it. At this time when we could not even openly touch other people, 
we long to touch. It's a time when we cannot visit other people and we long to visit. We take things for granted. And perhaps this is a time to really think about it. That when the sun rises again, when all this virus care is over, we might decide to live life differently. We might decide to do things differently. Perhaps we begin to realize our mortality, like life is too short, that the reality that we can die at any moment has become so true in our case. And so the more we begin to acknowledge the fact that we have to do the work while it is day, as long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. It only goes to show that life is short. When the time comes for us to go, there's nothing else we can do. We just pack our bags and go. Some, as they go to the hospital, it's a one-way trip. They're never coming back. But according to statistics, 80% of those that catches this bug gets well. And so there is still a lot of hope. Brothers and sisters, we have to hold on to that hope. But we have to understand that in everything that happens, we have to acknowledge God. We have to acknowledge Him. And we have to understand also that God is not here as a tormentor. But God is here as a teacher. We are going through this because we need to learn. We are going through this hardship because we have to rise above it. In Jeremiah, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. See that? Plans to give you hope and a future. It's not the end of things. Hope and a future. And so it says, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. See, it is when we go through hard times that we realize the importance of praying and of being hopeful and to acknowledge the fact that we have a God who is still in control, who is looking down on us. And I'm even at this moment, probably comforting us. Again, stop thinking about the cause. It will only give you a headache. Start thinking about the purpose. Why we are going through this. How we can glorify God. How we can put things right. Eventually, the man was healed. Jesus spat on the ground, made mud, placed it on his face, asked him to go to the pool of Siloam. And he did so. He followed. And he got well. Brothers and sisters, we have a God who cares. We have a God who loves. We have a God who can perform miracles. Some would even say his eyesight was regenerated. I would say, no, it was generated. It was not regenerated. It's not like he's got his eyesight, lost it, and had it back. No. He didn't have eyesight in the first place. He was born blind and probably... He doesn't even have eyeballs after all, you know, he might have birth defects. But Jesus was showing that in the same way that Adam was made from dust of the ground, he used mud also and placed it on the eyes to fill in the missing things that would allow that man to see again. Jesus is God. Jesus died for you and me. And it's the same Jesus that will never leave you 
nor forsake you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for this opportunity to share your word. Lord, we pray that you will continue to strengthen the faith of everyone that's suffering right now. And we pray, Lord, that you will grant them strength, hope, and to hold on to you. And to use this time to acknowledge the things that they need to work on. Truly, Father, you are great. And we still come to you asking for your help, for we are only human. Thank you. And may we spread the good news to everyone that there is hope, that there is you. And we can weather the storm because you are by our side. And now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen.